Okay, everybody, let's come back to our seats. We're going to begin the service again. So everybody out in the hall, outside in the lobby, come on in, find your seats. Okay. You know, um, I wanted to explain something to some, to, you know, to, you know, to everyone here. I'm not sure if, if you're, you know, all aware or not. Some of you I know are, but uh, on Thursday, one of our, our, our members of our, our, our congregation, uh, Ophelia Armenta, had been shot in her home while there was a, 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 a robbery taking place. Um, I just wanted to you know, say what's right now going on. She's actually doing okay. She is going to survive. She had been. She had. She had actually received a, a single shot into her, her her chest, and it ended up after surgery yesterday, where they had the you know a bullet taken out. There wasn't any damage done to her lung. There wasn't any damage done to her you know you know you know heart. It actually, you know, m m missed her, you know, heart by you know, under an inch, and it's all out now. She's doing well, you know, relatively speaking, but we still have to, you know, absolutely, you know, pray over her, um, you know, as she's, you know, it's still in ICU, but she is completely stable and well. And I don't know if everybody is aware too, you know, she's actually uh, Dione Anderson's mom. You know the woman who we have up here playing all the time. She's you know her mom. So I, I just want to begin by you know praying for both Ophelia and for the whole family right now. Let's all pray. Lord God, Father God, we just give you thanks. Avino Makenu, our God and King, we thank you and we praise you that Ophelia is alive, and we thank you that Lord your hand, even though they went through this horrible tragedy, that Lord. There was nothing serious done, that she will be well, and that you are, are just on her and upon her. I pray, God, for a complete healing, that even right now where she is laying there in that hospital, I pray, God, that she would sense our prayers, that she would sense your presence in that room. Lord, make her well, heal her, bring her to full restoration. And I also, Lord, just ask for all of the you know, family, for you know, M M M M M Michael, and, 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 and Dione, and for everyone else in their family, Lord, that you would just strengthen them in this time. Lord God, just please strengthen their hearts, Lord. Fill them with your presence and peace. Lord, we will just give you all praise and all glory. In Yeshua's name, amen. You know what? Can we just ask, I just want to you know, you know, offer God a th 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 thanks for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Okay, we'll continue now with the service. Ya'amod Aharon ben Yochanan. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hambarach. Baruch Adonai Hambarach Le'olam. Baruch Adonai Hambarach Le'olam Vayed. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bahar Banu Mikol HaAmin Benatan Lanu Et Torah To Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen. Blessed be the Lord who is to be blessed. Blessed be the Lord who is to be blessed forever and ever. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all people and has given us your Torah. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Our Torah reading this morning comes from Psalm 119. Righteous are you, O Lord, and your, Lord, and your laws are right. 
the statutes you have laid down are righteous. They are fully trustworthy. My zeal wears me out, for my enemies ignore your words. Your promises have been thoroughly tested, and your servant loves them. Though I am lowly and despised, I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is everlasting, and your law is true. Trouble and distress have come upon me, but your commands are my delight. Your statutes are forever right. Give me understanding that I may live. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natan lanu Torah emet vekaye olam nata bituhenu Baruch atah Adonai no ten ha Torah. Amen. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the law of truth and has planted everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Am I, did I turn it on? Or? Now? Am I on now? Good. Well, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. And I get to share the word with you today. And um, I sort of, the guy who was up here doing, singing the present worship, he went a little bit long. And now I know what it is like when you have to, you know, also share the message. And you go, well, I got all. spoken, and I was going to try this time to make it a little bit different, but I don't have any overheads or slides. If you want to follow along, I'm going to be speaking from our, our Bibles, so everybody's going to have the same Bible, so you can follow in there, but my, my, my wife and Steve and everybody who knows me, I don't even have yet a cell phone. I don't tweet, and I don't, you know, I don't have cell phones, I don't do overheads, I don't do... It's not, you know what, it's not that I don't, I, I see there's other people there too, but it's not that I don't think it's good or I want to, there's not enough time. I mean, I don't know how you're supposed to fit, you know, all these things and always be looking at these things and, yeah, tweeting people back and forth. So, anyway, um, let me just ask the Lord to be here with us. Lord, we just give you all praise and glory and honor. God, I thank you for the word of God, which is alive, which is yeah, true. God, I just pray that you would anoint me to speak, that please, Lord God, you know, help me to stay you know, out of the way and just I'll, I'll allow this word to go forth that everyone hears, hears from you this day, I pray. And I'll just give you the praise and glory in, in Yeshua's name. Where I'm going to start from in this, it's going to seem like I'm kind of going around in circles a little bit, but it'll all make sense as we get further on. Um, the title of the message that I'm doing is called The Staff of Moses. The Staff of Moses is what this is called. But before getting to Moses' staff, it's interesting. I've been seeing now a lot, more and more and more. When you know you're on the you know, you know you know evening news that we watch a lot of times, and you'll see people they have these you know ads on, and it's for you know it's for pharmaceutical medication, and in the pharmaceutical medication ads, you know they've got somebody and they're playing tennis and smiling in slow motion and running and. They've got pain, but they take this pill, and all their pain goes away, and everything's terrific, and their life is wonderful and happy. But then in every single one of these ads, they start to say to you, you know, some side effects could include, you know, upset stomach, nausea, you know, going blind. I've you know, actually heard that, going blind. You know, you have seizures, you get depressed, commit suicide, all while the people are still running in slow motion and having. And so the thing is, I stumbled upon these scripture verses, it's in the book of, of a Proverbs, Proverbs 4, verse number you know, a, 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 a 20 through number, 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 4, 420 through, through, through 22. 
in our, our pew Bibles, it's on page number uh, six, twenty twenty eight. 628 in our pew Bibles. And these verses say this. It says, my son, pay attention to what I say. And just, you know, listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. And keep them within your heart. For they are a life to those who find them. And they are health to man's whole body. So there's this verse in Scripture which is absolutely true. Everything in Scripture is true. The word can't be broken. Every jot, every tittle of the word is going to stand for all eternity. And it says, son, put this word. You you just pay attention to what I say. Listen to my word. Don't let it leave your sight. Keep it within your heart because it is life to those who find it and health to a man's whole body. So this is incredible. And in this verse, there's no side effects listed. In other words, there's nothing here saying that if you do this, some side effects may include, you know, in other words, it just says, take the word, listen to it, focus on it, pay attention to it, because it's life and it's health to a man's whole body. So then I tried to figure out or tried to understand, okay, you know, I talk to people a lot and and I say, well, you know, are you in this word? Are you reading the Bible? I'm so busy. I mean, I just have so much to do. My son is doing this and we have to go there and, you know, we have this appointment and then we have another meeting and there's no time to read the Bible. The thing that's funny is I have never yet heard anyone say to me, you know, I haven't eaten anything all week long. I really would like to, but I'm so busy. I have to take my son here. I have, so I just haven't had any time to eat food. And yet the word is our nourishment to our spirit and our soul, just like food is nourishment to our flesh. So we do find time to eat. But I'm so I was trying to figure out why don't people read the Bible more? Why? I mean, there must be a reason because we know what it says. We know what it can do. And you know what's great? I found the answer in the Bible. Isn't that amazing? The answer's in here. And in Hebrews 4, which in our pew Bible is page 1186, and verse number 12, this is what it says. For the word of God, by the way, in the uh, 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 Greek there, the word of God is speaking about the actual written, written word of God. For the written word of God is alive and active, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, of a joint and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And I found the answer right there. It says that when we read the Bible, it's reading us. So the reason why we always sort of find the reasons or why we just don't want to is because a lot of us, it's like we don't want to. It's, it's not, this, this book, this Bible is not just a book. It's alive. It's active. It does stuff, and it can discern our hearts. So I think that I've sort of found that one of the reasons why we don't really spend a whole lot more time in the Word is because when we're reading the Word, it's reading us. And we don't always want to see what we're going to see in that mirror when we're reading the Word. Anyway, from there, I want to talk about the staff of Moses. This is uh, my staff. But we're going to read in Exodus 4. But before we do, just to give you a little idea of what's now going on in Scripture, Israel has been in Egypt for hundreds of years as as, as, Egypt's slaves. They're being abused. They're being beaten. And they're calling out to God, saying, Lord, send us a deliverer. God, get us out of here. Help us. Come and deliver us. So this little baby's born, Moses. You all, you know, hope are, are, are aware of that whole story. Moses is born, ends up being brought up in Pharaoh's palace, eats the best Egyptian food, wears the best Egyptian clothes, watches the best Egyptian entertainment. I mean, has everything that Egypt has to offer, Moses has. But one day, he suddenly discovers who he is. 
and he accidentally kills an Egyptian. He has to leave, and he runs away, and he spends 40 years in the wilderness as a shepherd. Now, along the way, he found a stick. And all shepherds back then, and even probably today, have a stick that they just sort of carry around so they can walk and, you know, they have to kind of go shoo-shoo to the sheep to get them to do things. So Moses finds this stick. He's carrying it around for around 40 years. Somewhere in there, he's got this death. And one day, he's on Mount Sinai with the sheep, and he hears God's voice out of this bush. And he tells Moses to go to Egypt and to tell Pharaoh to let my people go, set them free so that they can come out into the wilderness to, uh, you know, uh, to you know, offer sacrifices to me. And that's where we come to in this story here in Exodus 4.1. Um, let's see here. In our pew Bibles, it is on page number 56 or 57. So... It says in Exodus 4.1, it says, it, it, it says, Moses answered, what if they don't believe me or listen to me and say that the Lord didn't appear to you? In other words, here's Moses. Guy has been spending 40 years as a shepherd. He's not famous. He's not, he has a speech impediment, which he talks about. He has all these problems. And here's God telling him, go and tell Pharaoh. And Moses is going, they're not going to believe me. I mean, if I go up to somebody, I say, you know, the, the Lord told me to come here and to do this or that, you know, they're not going to believe me. What should I do? He says, what if they don't believe me or they don't listen to what I say? The Lord didn't appear to you. And the Lord said to him, what's that in your hand? He says, a, 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 a daff. The Lord said, throw it onto the uh, ground. So Moses took the stick he's been carrying for years, threw it on the ground. And it became a snake, and he ran from it. Oh, my God. I mean, can you imagine if I had taken this today and thrown it down here on the platform and it became a snake? I mean, you know, I'd have my own TV show. I would be, you know, I'd become, you know, I mean, everybody would be following after me. But he threw this down here, and he, he became scared. He ran away from it. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand, and you take it by the tail. So Moses reached out, and he took the staff in his hand, or he put the snake, and he, it, it became a, 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 a daff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of, 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 of Jacob, has appeared to you. So I want to look at... Three things that we see taking place here in these verses about you know, Moses. The first thing is that Moses had no idea what he had in his hand. He was walking around for 40 years with a stick, and he had no idea. It was just, yeah, it's my stick, I'm just walking around with it. That's the first thing that happens. The second thing that happens is when he discovers the power or what it can do, he becomes scared of it. In other words, we were just reading in that verse, unlike some of us, you know, when something supernatural like that happens or whatever, you know, he doesn't go, well, this is great, I have the power in my... Moses went like, I'm out of here. I mean, look at this. This thing turned into a snake. What am I supposed to do with it? But the third thing that happened is when he finally grasped it, it became the instrument of our Lord God's authority for Israel to be set free from Egypt, for Israel a, 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 a deliverance. So we've got three things. Moses didn't know what it was. When he discovered what it was, he became scared of it. And when he then reached out and he did grasp it, it became God's instrument of authority for Israel to be set free. So one would think, okay, this is great. Now, Moses was afraid, you know, they're not going to believe me. How are they going to know what we're doing? You know, I'm going to go to Pharaoh. He's not going to believe. So I'm going to go and I'm going to throw my stick down on the ground. It's going to become a snake and they're going to let Israel go free. But that's not exactly what happened. If we go to a chapter 7, in Exodus chapter 7, verse number 8 and on, it says, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when, 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 when Pharaoh says to you, 
to perform a miracle, say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh and it will become a snake. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and they did exactly as the Lord commanded. Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and his officials and it became a snake. Pharaoh then summoned wise men and sorcerers and the Egyptian magicians also did the same things by their secret arts. So, I mean, we got a problem here. It's like, here's God saying, look, this is my power, and this is, it's going to become a snake. That's going to set everyone free. But the magicians did the same thing. They turned their, their stick into a snake, too. So, let's just read on a little bit more. Each one threw down his staff, and it became a snake, but Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. So, basically... Yes, they did this supernatural act, but Aaron's staff snake swallowed up the others. But a couple of things that we need to, that, you know, should be pointed out from here. In 2 Timothy 3, verse number 8 through 12. Yeah, let's see. It's on page 1179. I'm sorry, 2 Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 8, oh, 8 and 9. It says, But uh, uh, just as Giannis and Yambers opposed Moses, so also uh, 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 these men oppose the truth. Men of depraved minds, who as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected. So, but they will not get very far because, as is the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. But we're warned by Timothy, I'm just sort of taking a little sidetrack here, that in our days, you know, you may see some things happen too that are supernatural. And there, it, first of all, everything supernatural is not of God. Just because something happens that's supernatural, it's not necessarily of God. This is the determining factor, the Word of God. If you know what's in the Word of God, if something happens supernatural and it does not line up with the Word of God, it is not God. I don't care how, how happy people are and how successful or how whatever it is. If it doesn't line up with this, it's not. But we're being told by Paul that in these days, we'll see things like this too. But the thing in that story, though, um, you know, ultimately the power of God uh, overcame the power of the enemy. Now, I want to use this today as an analogy for our Bible, for this Word of God. In other words, I believe that the Word of God is God's instrument of authority for us in this day and age, just as that stick was for Moses. And I think that we can learn by how Moses reacted and what he did with that rod of how we should also see the Word of God as well. For one thing, the first thing, Moses had no idea what he had in his possession. For a lot of people, people who are here and many people who are out online, you've had this Bible for years and years and years. It sits on the shelf right next to, you know, uh, another book by, you know, someone else and next to the thing, or it sits on a, a, a coffee table. And yes, it's the Word of God, and yes, we read it when we have an occasion and we have time, but we have no idea what we've got in our hands. We have no idea what it is. So that's the first thing, like with Moses. When he found out, when he threw this thing on the ground and saw what it was, Moses didn't act in you know, arrogance and in pride. He was afraid. And I believe that when we come to understand, and I hope that we do, the instrument of God's authority for us today that we not just look at it with arrogance and pride, but that we look at it in fear and in humility. In Isaiah, I'm going to put this down. In Isaiah 66, verse number 2, Ishiyahu, Isaiah is speaking, and, or our, our, our Lord is speaking through Isaiah, through Ishiyahu, it says, it says, you know, the Lord says, you know, has not my hand made all these things, and so they came into being, declares the Lord. This one I esteem. He who is humble 
and contrite in spirit and who trembles at my word. So right here in the Bible, God is telling us, you know, sometimes we go, why isn't God answering the prayer? Or why, is God, what, what, why isn't God listening? Well, he's always listening. He's always listening. But it says, this is the one that I will esteem. This is the one I will really pay attention to. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and who trembles at my word. That's the person who I'm going to pray. That's the person who, when they pray, I will listen and hear. Not a person who knows everything. Not a person who has every answer. A person who's sorry for his sin. Sorry for his mistake. is contrite of heart. And it doesn't, doesn't think more of himself. But approaches the word of God in fear and in trembling. We need to respond to God's word in that way. I'm going to give you four reasons why we should tremble at God's word. I'm just going to go through them pretty quickly and briefly. But first, in Psalm 33, verse number 6 and verse number 9, it's on page 549, it says, By the word of the Lord were the, the heavens made, their adari host by the breath of his mouth. So the word of God made the heavens, the stars by the breath of his mouth, by the words that came out of his mouth. And in verse number nine, it says, for he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. So God's word is his creative power. This Bible, the word of God that we have, is God's creative power. By his word, everything came to be. Second thing is the word of God sustains the whole, the whole, the whole, oh, 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 everything. It sustains the world. It sustains the whole universe. In the book of you know, Hebrews, Hebrews 1.3, it says the son, speaking of Yeshua, the sun is, the, is the, 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 the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Everything in the universe is sustained by the word, by God's word. We can talk some other time, not today, but... Yeshua, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word, the Word became flesh, and the Word is God. It's totally synonymous. They're the same. They're one and the same. The Word of God, the third reason why we should fear and tremble is like that one verse that I had quoted before. The Word of God can discern the thoughts and intentions of our heart. It's living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as to the division of soul and spirit, of you know, joint and marrow, and able to discern the thoughts and attentions of our heart. So the word of God can discern our heart. And the fourth thing is that the word of God is the standard by which we will be judged someday. In the book of John 12, Verse number 47 and 48, it's on page 1066. It says, as for the person who hears my words but doesn't keep them, I do not judge him. For I didn't come to judge the world, but to save it. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and doesn't accept my words. That very word which I spoke will condemn him on the last day. The word of God is our judge. So, the second thing that Moses did was he grasped, once he got over his fear, or once he approached it with the awe and the fear that it deserved, when he grasped this, it became the instrument of the Lord's authority to deliver Israel from Egypt. Now, we've got to look at the story and understand there was nothing magical or powerful about a stick. Yet, in the story that we read in the book of Exodus, everything that happens without the stick, without the staff, nothing happened. That was the instrument of God's authority. God said, throw down the staff, it'll become a snake. It did. 
Moses took the staff, put it into a, 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 a b- 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 river. The river became blood. Moses, when, 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 you know, is, when you know, Israel was you know, on their way out of Egypt, they stood by the banks of the Red Sea. Here's, the army is behind them. The sea is in front of them. What are we going to do? Moses lifts up the staff and the Red Sea parts. They're out in the wilderness. They come to this awful, you know, bitter pool, which I think I talked about one time a while ago, the bitter pool of, you know, Mara. Moses takes the staff and puts the staff in the water. The water becomes sweet. It becomes healed. Israel has no water. Moses takes the staff. He touches a rock. Now, we know God did these miracles. It wasn't the magic staff. God didn't give Moses a magic staff. But he imbued that staff with his authority, and when Moses took the staff and wielded it, that was what would happen. When they were fighting against uh, one of their enemies, they would be out there on the battlefield. Moses would stand there, hold up the staff. Israel would be winning. His arms would grow tired. Israel would start losing. Hold up the staff. Israel's winning. Arms grow tired. Israel, go, go, Aaron and her, hold his arm up. Hold up his arms. Keep that staff up in the air. So the reason why I'm saying that is that once he understood and he approached it in the right heart, that became the instrument of God's authority for the deliverance of Israel out of Egypt. They were not liberated by an army. Israel wasn't liberated by an army. They were liberated by a staff that was carried by two people, Aaron and Moses at, at various times. I'm not going to go too far beyond this today because we'll get into a a much bigger thing. But the way that we wield the, the, the sword, the way that we wield the staff, the word of God, is by proclaiming the word of God, by speaking the word, just like the Lord God spoke things into existence. When we speak the truth, here's... The word is living and active. It's alive. When we learn the Bible, when we put it in our heart, I mean, do you realize something? Because, I mean, I'm certainly not experiencing this thing yet myself, but I'm hoping that I will. That verse I read at the beginning, keep this word in your heart. Never let it depart from your eyes. Keep it in your ears. Listen to it at all times. It will be life and health to your whole body. Now, the thing that's interesting, I don't know the exact what you do on this prescription, but what happens is that, what happens if we go to the doctor and we go, you know, don't feel well, I have this problem. Here, let me write you a prescription. Just be careful, some side effects may include, you know, but here's this prescription. And you say, I want you to take this three times a day. Take it, you know, in the middle of the day, in the morning, in the middle of the day, whatever. Well, if we get the pills and we don't take it three times a day, They're not going to work. You aren't going to get better. Well, God gave us a prescription. He says, never let this word depart from your sight. Keep it in your heart. Keep it in your ears. It will be life to those who find it and health to a man's whole body. I believe the word of God. That's true. God's word can't be broken, but we have to do it. Now, well, I mean... I'm going to kind of close what I'm talking about with a scripture verse from Isaiah that everybody's very aware of and familiar with, but we're going to read it again today anyway. Isaiah 55, verse number 10 and 11. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and they will not return to it without, with, without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return empty. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. The word of God goes out, but we have to wield it the same way that we saw you know, M- 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 Moses doing for the deliverance of Israel. Um, I'm going to finish there. I just want to you know, offer this for some people because somebody this week was talking to me. I know that there are 
some people that are just really struggling spiritual battles, just really fighting oppression and, and just spiritual oppression and junk. If anybody's interested, I've got, I don't have a whole lot of copies, but I've got a, 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 a prayer. I had actually, you know, made this up for someone. And um, it's about four pages long, or as it is, you know, typewritten. But it is completely scripture. Every single thing in this prayer is scripture. And if you pray this prayer every single day, I believe, and I've seen it in my own life at various times, it will have tremendous impact because it is the word of God and it's your proclaiming and speaking the truth of the word. So if there's anybody who's interested in one of these, if you, know, you have a need for it or whatever, I don't have a lot of copies, but I've got some and you know, you're certainly you know, welcome to them. Um, if you know, somebody else wants one and we're out, I, I can make some more later. But anyway, I'm going to conclude there. Um, we have in our, in our hands God's instrument of authority for this day and for this age and for our time. The, the politicians do not have the answers. The armies and the you know, generals don't have the answers. The scientists don't have the answers. The doctors have the answers. I mean, don't have the answers. We are the ones who have the answer, but we have to now exercise it. And I really believe that the Lord is just calling out to his body, it's time. It's time for Israel. It's time for many things, but you need to take what I've given you that you've had all these years and never understood, and you need to start to use this the way it was meant to be used. Now, let's pray. And then actually, can the band, yeah, both Deanne and Bernie... Pray, you know what, before we do, I just, I'm so blessed by having Bernie and Deanne, and can we just thank them? I'm really blessed by having them play. And everybody else who's also playing. It's, things are just wonderful on our worship team. Father, we just give you praise, glory, honor. We thank you for the word. Lord, I just pray that this message would sink into hearts. I pray, God, that, that people would hear what was spoken today and that you would guide us, Lord God. We can't do it without you. We need you to show us and to guide us. But we thank you, God, for this day that you have given us, for this place that you have set us in, for this time. And I just pray, Lord God, that your anointing would be upon all here, that we would go forth, that we would, Lord God, be your people with your word, and that we would see this earth, and many come to faith, Lord God. Many come to know you and be saved. And we'll just give you all praise and all glory in Yeshua's name. Amen. Would you stand? We're going to do a final song, and, and thank you. Praise God. Jerusalem.
After doing the ironic benediction, please remain standing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace, bring you shalom now and evermore. Beshem Yeshua HaMashiach, Ha'or Le'olam. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah, the light of the world. Amen. Go and be blessed. Have a wonderful week. See you on Wednesday night, maybe, or on Sunday, on Shabbat, next Shabbat. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, Elohim, Adonai. God who answers by fire, glorify your Son, Jesus Christ, the true Messiah.